Hi, my name is Chris and I'm the owner of Dog Obedience Group. And I'm really excited to have the opportunity to share a little bit more about our dog trainers course with you. Hopefully, by watching this quick video, you'll have a better idea if this is the right program for you to take the next step in your dog training career. Now, I want to start off by just sharing a little bit about Dog Obedience Group. And, and then hopefully that can kind of help guide you into knowing better who we are and who you'll be taking and the type of people that you'll be working with while you'd go through this program. Now first, we, uh, Dog Obedience Group was initially opened in 1992. So we've been around for quite a while. The outside of that, uh, we are a positive reinforcement training facility only. And uh, our focus is having certified and educated trainers. Now that means that each one of our staff members always work is either certified or working towards a certification, which kind of sums up our culture. And what I mean by that is that we are a culture of learning, meaning that um, our focus is, is that no matter where you are in your dog training career, whether you're somebody in our foundations program, whether you're an employee, whether you're myself as an owner or one of the managers or a trainer who just started a dog obedience group, your focus should always be to continue growing as a trainer. Your focus should be taking opportunities to teach others when you can, as well as learning from others. Now that's just a little bit about us. Now let's go ahead and dive into why we decided to start this program. Over the years, we've had a lot of people ask us, how do you get into the dog training industry? And that's kind of a loaded question. There's a few schools out there, there's a few random trainers, uh, or there's a handful of trainers out there, but overall, it can be kind of difficult to get into the training industry as a whole and have that opportunity to gain experience. And this is one of the reasons that we decided that we wanted to create this foundations course, is to create opportunities in a working training environment for trainers to grow. Now, the other reason is that we saw a lot of the dog training schools were overpriced and didn't provide you any hands-on opportunities or to learn. And so we decided that we needed to bring something to the table. We know that dog training comes in several forms, or learning, excuse me, to become a dog trainer comes in several forms, but mostly hands-on. Having the opportunity to be sitting there with somebody who's educated in the field and have a dog in your hands. Having somebody who can give you active feedback based on training with your dog, another dog, in a classroom environment. These were all opportunities and things that were missing in a lot of the dog training schools. And so we saw that we have the opportunity and the ability to bring that to our community of people who wanted to get into the dog training industry. That is why we decided to create this program. All right, now that we've covered who we are and why we created the program, Let's dive on just a little bit into what the program looks like. Now, this program is built to uh, last up to nine months, and, and it really shouldn't last any longer than that. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't finish the program faster than nine months. Uh, that all is just based on your availability. But nine months allows people who are generally working a full-time job to hopefully still get in, still accomplish the things they need to in our facility and outside of our facility um, successfully um, in a nine month period of time. Now, we broke this, the, the programming down into quarters. Again, you can move faster than that, but the quarter, uh, quarterly goals. Now, Q1 or quarter one is the foundations of dog training. And so when I mean the foundations of dog training, we're gonna dive into the basics. Now, keep in mind, if you do have any past experience as a dog trainer, some of these things may be review, and that's great. Uh, we will always, we won't let you just settle. We'll keep pushing you further, even for those items that are just reviewed for you. So we're gonna dive into clicker and marker training, understanding um, how that training tool works. Uh, we'll talk about basic observation, so how to assess a dog before you start really start diving into a training session. We're gonna talk about uh, capturing and shaping, which are two out of three major ways our uh, training styles that we use. And then we're also gonna talk about common behavior problems, meaning, your, your ability to, um, to understand and, and fix or treat behaviors such as house soiling, barking, uh, mouthing, chewing, and things of that nature. Now those aren't the only things, but those are a lot of the things that we're gonna do together. Outside of that, we're also gonna have additional book um, reading uh, materials and things like that for you. You will also be able to take part in some of our classes. So you see from a, uh, a student standpoint, 
what it's like to be in a class with your dog, as well as start teaching basic obedience cues within that class. That is just kind of the Q1 in a nutshell. Now, let's dive into Q2. All right, so as we dive into uh, Q2, we're gonna build on those things that we've gained in, in, uh, in Q1. And that means that we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna discuss, uh, or uh, we're gonna discuss the four phases of learning, meaning how does a dog progress in learning? What, how do we break down those different learning phases and identify where they're at in a learning process for any given cue or behavior that you're trying to train? Now, two, is, is going to be taking that information that you gained in quarter one and start teaching a, a trainer basic obedience cues. Now, we already know how to do basic obedience cues, but we also understand that dog training is not just about your ability to go out and grab a dog and teach sit down and stay or any other basic obedience cue. It is the ability to translate that and communicate that clearly to the person on the other end of the leash. Now, as much as we all love working with dogs, a great part of, or a big part of dog training is working with the person on the other end of the leash. Because if they're not successful, the dog's never gonna be successful. And so we put a strong focus in that um, all throughout the course. But in Q2, it really dives into your ability to teach and, and speak clearly to them. Next, um, we're gonna start having you do a lot more hands-on work. Now, some of that hands-on work is gonna be with your own dog, teaching again, obedience cues. But not just basic obedience cues, we're gonna start looking for high-end, uh, high-performing behaviors and basic obedience, what we call a fluent behavior. Now, outside of that, you're also gonna have the opportunities to start working uh, in this facility. We'll be able to assign you dogs when you're able to stop in and work for a few hours here and there. And the goal here is that you're able to take a variety of personalities or a variety of dog breeds, personalities, ages, and teach them basic obedience skills. Now that may seem simple, but what we do find and what's gonna help your trainer's toolbox is to, um, is to be able to work with these dogs because what you're gonna find is that you're gonna, you're gonna work with young and energetic dogs. You're gonna, do, uh, you're gonna work with older dogs who are kind of aloof to new people and not necessarily wanting to learn. You'll have opportunities to find out um, and research, how do I find the right motivation tool for this dog? How do I work through a dog who's highly distracted by other dogs in, the, in, the, in an environment? How do I work with a dog who doesn't like treats or doesn't like toy reinforcers? We find and I give you the opportunity to gain hands-on experience working with a variety of dogs, running into a lot of these problems long before you ever have to be sitting face-to-face -face with a client who's paying you to help them through those answers. All right. Now, along with these things, we'll, uh, these things we address, you're gonna have some different book material and other uh, learning material to go right along with everything else that we just discussed. Q2, whether it sounds like it or not, is definitely gonna keep you busy and engaged um, throughout the entire process. All right, so now, let's go ahead and dive into Q3. All right, so as we dive into Q3, a couple of things we need to think about now. We should have, you should have a solid understanding of how dogs learn, the process they learn, multiple ways to teach um, a variety of obedience cues, how to handle basic, uh, basic and the most common behavioral problems. You should have gotten your hands dirty with a variety of dogs uh, in, uh, in training, so your hands-on experience should be getting better and better, and now you're ready to take it a step further. Now, here is where we're gonna dive into teaching others, and advanced obedience. Now, teaching others, again, like we talked about in the, in the quarter two stuff, is that teaching others is the key to a successful dog trainer. The better that you are at guiding a variety of, of personality traits to be able to communicate and help their dog, the better of a trainer you're gonna be, the more successful that you're gonna be. Because that is the hardest part about dog training for most dog trainers is taking that communication, that knowledge that you have gained and worked so hard to obtain and translating that over to somebody who doesn't necessarily have the same passion as you. They love their dogs, but they're not necessarily uh, wanting to be a dog trainer. But unfortunately, most people can't afford to pay us to be at their house each and every day, so we have to have the ability to teach them, motivate them, and help them find success. So we'll have some great opportunities for you to learn uh, to teach others and some, uh, and some education on good ways that help people become very successful, even the clients who are having a very difficult time. 
Now, on top of this, we also start working on uh, having you start working in group classes, meaning that we're going to have you start teaching in a group, uh, teaching in a group class setting. The reason that we're going to have you start teaching in a group class setting is so that your public speaking continues to improve and it's learning classroom management. Now, when I say classroom management, that's the ability to work with a variety of clients at once and manage a variety of issues, concerns, questions, and things that will pop up. We'll also start getting you involved in additional types of uh, uh, training classes, advanced training classes, advanced obedience, um, dog sports such as agility. Um, and tricks and things of that nature so that you're not only learning the very basics but you've got the opportunity to take future clients of yours and help them expand on their knowledge uh, and continue having fun and finding fun outlets for their dogs. Now last but not least is one of my favorites and that is where we're going to teach you and educate you and challenge you, invite you to work with another species. species. Utilizing the same exact skills that we've given you here at Dog Obedience Group. Now, the reason we do that is that the learning process or learning theory is the same across the board. And taking in that knowledge that you have and learning how to apply it with another species, not only is something thrilling and exciting for every single trainer that we've ever worked with, uh, but it also helps you grow as a trainer and understand, truly understand the fundamentals of learning theory with dogs. Now, this one is, this quarter is not only going to be filled with that, but we'll also have reading materials and other things just like in the past. We know that you will enjoy this third quarter, these third quarter items, uh, just as much, if not more, than the knowledge you already gained in the first two, first two quarters. And we look forward to diving into it. So now let's get ready to kind of sum it up and break it all down into uh, so a couple of key things that you need to take away to help you make your decision. Now that we've covered each and every piece of this program, I want to recap and better help you understand just kind of the styles of learning that you should expect. Now one is going to be hands-on learning. You are going to get a lot of hands-on learning like we've discussed um, with your own dogs and with us as your trainers and with the dogs here at this facility. We're going to also include books and videos um, and other visual pieces to help you learn and in-person coaching will also be another um, another type of learning that you will have while you're in the program. I hope this video answered a lot of your questions and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any additional questions. This program does start um, about every quarter and in between that is when we start doing interviews and helping people uh, uh, helping people get started and prepared to start the program. Feel free to fill out the registration there on our uh, on the dog trainers course page and we'll reach out to you and uh, set up a time to meet and, and better discuss and get to know each other before we both make final decisions on it. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.